We are happy this morning to take a portion of our service to ordain a couple who've been at this ministry for a number of years now and started serving as a volunteer and uh, uh, committed themselves and their family, their two boys, uh, to the work of the Lord here. And uh, then he got hired by the church to become our youth pastor, and he's doing a phenomenal job, both he and his wife. Amen. And they just recently hosted their impact night, and for those of you who are not here, you missed it. It was awesome. And uh, again, we want to congratulate you, congratulate you guys on your accomplishment. Amen. Um, uh, Pastor Kevin's mom is here today. Mom, where are you? Would you please stand? Let's just welcome his mom. And the entire family that came from out of town, would you please stand? Everybody's connected to Pastor Kevin. Let's give them a warm South Florida welcome. Thank you guys for being here this morning. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. So at this time, Pastor Kevin and Katrina, would you come and stand right here first? And uh, this is the official ordination service. They have been functioning in the capacity of the office of a minister for quite some time. And uh, it was kind of like training. They were doing that without the official title, without this spiritual act. As I was training them in their training session and was talking to them about the difference between what they were doing and the title they were operating in versus now that they're going to be ordained. The ordination is the seal of approval. The spiritual seal of approval that they are handpicked by God and that the clergy has recognized that and now put the seal of approval over their life. When David, as we heard an amazing sermon by Cora Jakes Coleman on Friday, when David was going to be selected as king, already before he was anointed, God has appointed him to be king. And quite honestly, David was already in training for the kingship. But it was not until the prophet Samuel came and anointed him. What am I saying? We must be careful as a church that we do things decently and in order. This is very important. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of self-proclaimed ministers who are floating around and out there. People, I'm an apostle, I'm an evangelist, I'm a minister, I'm a deacon, I'm an elder, I'm a bishop. And then the question is, who ordained you? to that official capacity. Let's be careful that we don't become a dysfunctional church where we pursue our own self-interest and we put a bad taste to the unbeliever when there's chaos out there uh, in the church, when they look at us and they say, well, okay, fine. You know, because one of the things, and this is what I shared with the Tuckers in our counseling, that it is so important that they understand the chain of command and be loyal to the office that they've been called to. It's very important. When I tell you I love this couple, I really do. I've told you guys that. I love you guys. All I told you guys I asked for is your commitment to the Lord. And I believe if you commit yourself to the Lord, you commit yourself to the ministry. I shared with, I'm not an insecure guy. I'm really not an insecure pastor. I look for people with talent when I find it. Even if the talent is greater than me, I push you forward. That's the key. I'm not going to be on this stage forever. I keep telling you all that. 27 years ago, at the age of 27, I started this church. A young man, I'm 54. And there will come a time where I will sit in that front row 
and be watching these young people running this church. That's where I'm headed. And I do not want to get old and stand on this stage trying to hold on to this podium because it's my thing. I don't want to do that. So when I find gifted people like this, I pour into them and I ask that in turn, when you find a father that loves you, you don't backstab that daddy. You love on him, you care for the ministry, I've watched you guys, I've seen your loyalty, and I commend you. And before this entire congregation, I want you guys to know I love you to death. I seriously mean that. And it is a pleasure. Uh, my wife and my boys, they're not here this morning. They're out of town. I'll be flying to join them again. Uh, but we all appreciate you for the commitment that you've given to the youth ministry. And I'm quite sure your workers and the young people are watching you this morning. Your mom, your entire family. Your mom is here too. Where's your mom? I didn't know. I'm sorry. Would you stand up, mommy, so that we can show off on YouTube? All right, this is Trina's mom. God bless you. Thank you. I get to meet you after the service. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. All right, so now we're going to officially ordain you as ministers. So... The scripture I want to first of all read, it's really a, a scripture that we're all familiar with. Calling you to the office of a minister relates to Matthew 28, beginning at verse 18, even Mark 16, 15, and 16. Uh, Mark 16, I'm sorry, 15 and 16. It says, all power, Jesus speaking these words, he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he commands us to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Really what the word of God is saying, he appoints us to go. It is not our duty to force people to accept. We don't get to judge and get angry at people. And, and that this whole um, passage of scripture is teaching me as a pastor, I don't have to do my duty with hostility. You don't have to get angry. You can pastor, you can lead God's people with compassion. And some people are going to like you. Some people are not going to like you. Some people is going to work with you. Some people is not going to work with you. Some people are going to cheer you on. Hey, man, Pastor Kevin and Sister Trina, you're doing well, man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're the best youth pastor we ever had. And then there are going to be some people going to say, like, you know what? They're just full of themselves. They're Fernandez's little boy and girl. Oh, you be shocked. you be shocked at what people. And not only that, here's the sad thing about it. I have to tell you the truth because Paul, when he got the young Timothy, he had to train Timothy because Timothy received a culture shock because Paul had to tell him, wait, you got to be careful because when you think it's just the world that is cunning, <laughs> what I have discovered over 27 years of ministry that you have to watch your back. Would you look at your neighbor and just say, watch your back. That's all I got to say. And I move on. So as you stand here, I'm going to um, ask you a charge and then you're going to say um, we do or I do individually because it relates to both of you. Do you promise to walk worthy of the high call in to preach? And will you constantly strive to bring glory to God, your Lord? And will you promise to carry out the sacred duties of the ministry without thought of furthering any self-ambitions? And will you make your highest goal to win and nurture souls through teaching, inspiration, and exhortation about the holy things of God? If you so do promise, say, I do. Congregation, would you stand as I read you a charge? And as a community of people, um, God select 
people, men and women from among us, and put them in leadership position, and we must understand they cannot lead without us. We have to support and be behind them. So as a congregation, do you promise to accept these two individuals that are at the altar? As ministers of the Faith Center, do you promise to pray for them? Do you promise to give them your utmost best support? Do you promise to cover them and their children? Do you, do you promise that even when difficult times come in their lives, rather than choosing to criticize them, to destroy them, that you will become a community who will support, embrace, and encourage and strengthen them. If you so do, say, we will. We will. Then at this time, I'm going to ask, would you both come to the stage here? If you could remove this uh, for me, please, for a moment. And would you stand in front of both of those kneeling pad? Yes, thank you. Pastor Jadalti, would you come? Would you come? And I'm going to ask all the uh, pastors, if you're a pastor, would you come? Come, all the pastors of the Faith Center, come with me, please. All the pastors, you know who you are. Okay, come on up. And please stand behind them. Please stand behind them. Pastor Jadalti, you come stand next to me. Get him a mic, please. Pastor Jadalti. Okay, yes. You're a minister? Okay, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, he's with you. Oh, pastor. Okay, God bless you. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, he speaks Portuguese, right? Okay, all right, all right. All right, did we get everybody? Give it to Pastor Dalton. All right, so just remain standing because this is really the key. I'm going to ask Pastor Dalton to pray, and then I declare the pronunciation of the blessing over this couple. But as a church, this is our moment now to receive. You've made a promise that you've accepted this family as um, really the as ministers of the Faith Center, that we're going to support them in every possible way. We'll do a prayer, then I'm gonna ask the entire family after, if you don't mind, I want you to come and stand behind them when we're doing the declaration. Just stand by if you don't mind. You're not forced to if you don't want to, but if you'd like to join, I think it's important, and your two children too, they'll come after and so forth. All right, would you please at this time kneel? Okay. And ministers, would you come as much as close as possible? Lay your hands on either one. Pastor Jadalti, let's pronounce and pray the official ordination prayer. Would you stretch your hands now towards these two, please? Praise the Lord. Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you. We are so thankful before the foundation of the world we had chosen them, Lord, to be ordained in this day, to fulfill the task and the job that yes. you have for them. The purpose of God is upon their lives. Yes. And right now yes. we rebuke yes. all the evil spirits yes. contrary yes. to their yes. work, to their job in this church. Among the youth people, you know, Lord, that you have much greater things for their lives. Yeah. Lord, we ask them that their heart may be faithful all the days of their lives to this ministry, to this man of God, uh, to their you. family, thank to you. their calling. Oh, Father God, we thank you so very much. Yes. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, yes. with power, with authority, with the anointing. Give them, Lord, all the wisdom that they need thank to you, deal Jesus. with the things that will come up their way thank every you, day of their ministry. And we thank you so very much because you, Jesus Christ, you, you are the greater and yes. you are among us and yes. you are upon them. Yes. You are inside of them. Holy Spirit, anoint them from this day forward to fulfill yes. greater yes. task. In Jesus' yes. name, we thank you and you give you all the glory and the honor forever and never. Amen. 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 Yes, 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 yes. At this time, I'd like to anoint both of you 
to a very sacred office, a powerful, influential position. Use it wisely. At the end of the day, let God get the glory. That's it. Let him get the glory. Ministry is painful. It's painful. Sometimes it's a lonely road. Sometimes it's a road where you're going to have your Judases. But you'll have you some Peters. Love your Judases and stick close to your Peters. Always remember that. We're praying for you. And today, we anoint you and declare that you're now operating in the office as a minister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You're called to the office of a minister, a pastor. Don't ever forget, you don't have your own agenda. I'm handing to you your own Bible with your name written in it. It is not for you to rewrite scripture. It is for you to speak scripture and defend the word of God. Sir, I hand you what has transformed my life over the years. It will. I know God is taking you to big places. And you need to hear me. He's taking you to big places. For all of the pain and the disappointment that you have endured for years, God says because of your consistency and your faithfulness, he's going to give you double for your trouble. Katrina, thank you for standing beside this man. Thank you for believing in him. Thank you. That then when there were moments you did not understand the call that was on his life, you stood as a great woman. Protect him. Watch over him. Be his eyes. And I'm telling you, as God is elevating him, always remember this. A smart woman never gets jealous, never puts pressure, because she understands everywhere he goes, <laughs> the only reason why he's there and being sustained is because of you. Stand with him. God bless you. You may stand. You may stand at this time. Before I introduce you, come on, you can stand together as a team. Pastor Dadalte, where's the mic? You want to just say a last word and the pastor just, you may be seated, congregation, sorry, thank you. Just say a few words and we'll take it from there. Well, this is one of oh, the yes. most important, I would say the most important job in the whole world. Because from now on, you will be taking care truly of lives that will live eternally mm -hmm. in heaven. And there's nothing more important than that, Don't, more powerful, more precious. And I know inside of my heart, by the Holy Spirit, that God has a huge way, huge doors, mm -hmm. and nothing can stop you, just you. Because the Holy Spirit is here and the anointing here 
and now you have a man of God. Well, I don't know if you all felt what I felt here, but the Holy Spirit is in this place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is amazing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have no words. Yes, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor, you want to say something? Hallelujah. Just let him say something. Can you say one Okay. Interpret for you. Right. In Portuguese. It's an honor to be here, being part of this moment, which is a moment more important of your lives. There is no other work more important than the work of the Lord. God bless you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Faith Center Ministers, if you could just go from the side, just move away, Faith Center Ministers, and then so that the family can come together yeah. behind them, close with their children. Uh, mommy, thank you so much for raising an incredible daughter. Thank you. thank you so much. You've raised an incredible boy. Thank you, thank you. And I just want to say to all of you, thank you for traveling all the way to South Florida to support your family members. I am so honored to be their leader, and as you can tell, today is a really emotional day for me. And, and, and I say that is this young man kind of somewhat reminds me of myself. Here's the reason why. When I was a little boy, it was ordained, it was prophet. When my mom had me in her womb, a minister walked up to my mom and said, this was before sonogram and all that kind of stuff and said, you're carrying a boy. His name will be Henry Bonita Antoni Marshall Fernandez. That's my name, real name, seriously. He'll be a preacher of the gospel. In 1964, it was already declared. And I tried to run away from that thing. And what I see here when you are carrying this boy he shouldn't be here today. But God saw a preacher in him. And when there were moments to either abort or could you do this by yourself, God wouldn't let you give up, mama, because God knew that on this day, he was going to show the world that there's a David, there's a giant that is coming to take over the next generation so that they will be the proclaimer of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody better give him praise in the house this morning. So you had to go through the struggles over the years you didn't know how you were going to make it. You didn't know how you were going to support your kids, but you did, and you struggled. But today, God says, I am turning your tears into joy. This is the reward of your labor. Uh, oh, I feel God in this place this morning. I don't know about you. I said, I feel God in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, when you think God is not watching, oh, he's watching. He's watching. Just keep on praying. Just keep on trusting. If you got children, just pray over them and leave them to God and watch how God will turn their lives around. Hallelujah. So I bless you as a family today. I bless you. You ain't seen nothing yet. This is just the beginning. And what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying is that there's a particular, and you know you're probably going to identify this, there's a particular generational curse that was attached. But today God says, Mama, it's broken. Ah! It's broken. Oh, it's broken. I said it's broken. Come on, it's broken. When God breaks a thing, oh, somebody ought to give him praise in this house. 
It's broken. I said it's broken. Would you high five somebody and tell them it's broken? Every generational curse. It's broken in the name of Jesus. It's broken. Yes. 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 Come on, give them a praise in this house. Give them a praise in this house. Oh, thank you, thank you, God. This family is free, free, free. It's broken, it's broken, it's Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, under the official title, Pastor Kevin and Trina Tucker. Please welcome them. I just want to thank each of you. Um, those that, re that really know me personally know that I'm more of a stay in the background, don't like a lot of fluff type person. But many of you have really, really been pushing me. And a lot of times I push back, but for some reason you keep pushing me. And I just want to say I appreciate it. I love you all. And as much as you pray for us, I just ask that you pray for our kids um, as we continue to pray for you. I just want to let you know that, that we truly, truly love you guys. We appreciate the, the family that you have given to us. You've been more to us than friends. You've been more to us than just church. But you're our family, and, and we just love you. Amen, amen. Good morning, Faith Center. Good morning. 
Amen, amen, amen. First Bishop, thank you for allowing my wife and I to operate in the call and the gift that God has placed on our lives. And I mean, you hit it spot on. People see what they see, but they have no idea the amount of times I've been beat down, bruised, even confused. And it got so bad that I told God I would rather die than do the will. Mm. Wow. It was that powerful. Mm. I was tired. Mm. And I'm so grateful this morning. I'm so grateful that the curse was broken. Sometimes you don't realize that you're in bondage. And sometimes you'll, you'll strive to get free and you don't understand. No matter how far you begin to move, you sometimes don't understand why you find yourself at a stuck place in trying to progress. But I'm so glad this morning that as, a, as I continue to charter the course that God has given me, I don't have to worry about the demons because the curse has been broken and so I am so honored to you and Pastor Carol for trusting us and I can tell you that my wife and I we are fully committed to the faith center to you and Pastor Carol and as I told you a long time ago it's easy for me to be committed to you because I'm committed to God wow that's good and it is our goal that we stay committed to God and that we execute everything that God has placed in you. We're here just to help fulfill vision. At the end of the day, I tell our youth volunteers and workers, I'm only here for one reason, to help a vision that God gave Bishop Fernandez become a reality. That's only one. To our church family, I gotta say, man, I love the Faith Center. We love you too. I gotta tell you, I love you guys. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for your consistent support. And you know, we don't get all, an opportunity always to see everybody, but if y'all know Pastor Kevin, I'm gonna stop in that lobby, hug everybody, talk to everybody. And that's just who I am because I love people. So I gotta tell you, as your youth pastors, we are committed to helping the next generation walk in the divine authority and power that God has anointed them to walk in. God is raising up a powerful generation to take over this nation. And that's our commitment with our children, our youth, and our millennials here at the Faith Center that we would do our part to take what God has given us to deposit into their lives that they can see the hand of God move upon them because we only one example. There are many of us in here. God is raising up many young people. So I ask you this day, continue to pray for us, continue to love on us as we strive to pursue God's will. Amen. Thank you so much. Come on, let's congratulate this family again. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.